Hey guys, it's me. And look what game I'm playing. That's right, welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Uh, for those of you who uh, aren't aware of what I'm suggesting, um, on Saturday I posted a video, a short one minute video, of something that happened when I tried to record this uh, recording. Let's just say, in short, it didn't work out because of a GameCube disc read error. But thankfully, uh, thanks to YouTube user, uh, don't worry, I'm looking up the name so I don't get it wrong or anything, or I don't uh, forget or give credit to the right person. Uh, thanks to YouTube user, geez, I can't find anything on YouTube anymore. Okay, view all comments. Scroll down. Simeon 16. Simeon 16, Simeon 16, whatever your name is. Thank you. Thanks to you, I figured out what to do next time I get a GameCube disc read error. All you need to do is just open up the GameCube top. Don't turn the game off. Don't turn the game off at all. Just open up the disc drive. Blow on the disc and then put it back in. And sure enough, it will take you right back to where you were in the game uh, when you got the discrete error. Now, that didn't happen in this recording, but still, thank you. Now I know what to do next time I have a discrete error. So you single-handedly saved this Let's Play. Okay, maybe not... Maybe you didn't actually save it because I didn't encounter a discrete error this time, but you did help, so I really appreciate it. Right now, I'm going through uh, one of the info conversations where we got a hammer and stuff, and then we're going through the final support conversation between Ike and Soren. Now, uh, in this conversation, you will learn a lot about Soren. You will learn one of his biggest secrets. He's a branded. What is a branded? A branded is a child created from the union of a Bjork and a Laguz. And in these times, that kind of relation is kind of frowned upon. But it touches on that kind of subject later on in Radiant Dawn more than this game. But uh, that's really all you need to do. Uh, all you need to know. That uh, Soren is a branded, and branded are uh, children of both Bjork and Laguz. A taboo union. And then Ike is just going to comfort him and say that it doesn't matter who your parents are, you are who you are, and you'll always be my friend, and you're a good person, and your haircut looks mighty feminine. Something like that. <laughs> so that's really all that conversation really talks about. Very interesting and very deep conversation. Uh, that is probably one of the better conversations, or the better supports, of the whole game, in my opinion. So that's why I went ahead and, and uh, tried to get that support in particular. So yeah, very interesting stuff, very deep stuff. And the hammer and staff that we got from the uh, base conversation, uh, that is a three-use staff. And what it does is, it repairs the weapon uses of a particular weapon. Now, there aren't very many choices that you can really go with when using the hammer and staff. Because a lot of the best weapons in the game, they have infinite uses no matter what. So, you'd essentially be using uh, the hammer and staff for like S-ranked weapons or A-ranked weapons. Weapons of that caliber. Don't use a hammer and staff on a fire spell, don't use it on an iron sword, don't use it on anything ranked A, or anything ranked lower than an A rank. That is just wasteful. Very, very wasteful. Uh, right now, uh, Renolf is talking to Ike about Nazar, and we're going to find out that Nazar was actually a spy for Gallia, in addition to being a spy for Dan. So, uh, no, um, Nazar was really, really, uh, um, what am I trying to say, um, a triple agent, because he's working for three p parties right now, 
There might have been more he's actually working for that we don't know about, but yeah, he uh, he worked for Gallia, he was working for Dan, and he was also working for us. So there were a lot of uh, secrets that Nazar hid from us. And uh, Renolf is going to talk to Nazar after this battle, which takes place on a giant long-ass bridge. Uh, yeah, this is, in my opinion, not the worst battle in the game. But it is definitely far from my favorite. Just because there are a lot of things you need to look out for on this long ass bridge. First of all, there are ballistas along the bridge, so you have to worry about enemies using ballistas. Uh, you also have to worry about uh, traps that are hidden under the ground. Because in this level, there are a few spots on the bridge that actually collapse when you land on them. Uh, you won't take any damage, but uh, you will fall asleep whenever that happens to you. So uh, you will be rendered useless for the rest of that turn, and maybe even part of the enemy's turn. Uh, you will re regain control after the turn's over and it's your turn again. But still, just be careful. Uh, I recommend, if you're ever doing this chapter, go to Game FAQs, and then go to the FAQ section. Uh, they have a map of this uh, level, and they show you where all the traps are. And they also have a very, very detailed just sketch of what the uh, battle looks like, so you can kind of take advantage of that. Uh, for this uh, recording, I didn't use a map, because I used a map on the other recording, so I pretty much knew where all the traps were. So I tended to avoid every trap. There was really only one trap in the entire level that I actually hit, uh, unaware of hitting, actually standing on it. Uh, some of the others, I just like went in there for the sake of going in there and showing you where some of them were. I'm not going to show you where all of them are, though. Now, right now, I'm going to go through all the characters, show you their stats, show you what weapons they have, show you what level they're at, because I haven't done that in a while. I really haven't done that at all, actually. So some of you are probably wondering, like, which characters I've leveled up and what characters I've gave bonus experience to. Uh, I used the majority of that bonus experience from uh, the last chapter. Uh, just on... I don't think I used it all on Ike, but I used a little bit of it on Ike. Uh, I think I used, like, two levels worth of BXP on Ike. And then I just gave the rest to other units that were close to leveling up, or about to leveling up. So, uh, I think I pretty much used all of it. And I only used it on units I actually planned to use, because it makes no sense otherwise. And then of course I'm going to reposition some of my units, put all the attackers in front. Uh, definitely try to stick sword users in the front first. Because there are actually a lot of axe users in this level. More axe users than anything, actually. Uh, it would be axes, lances, and then swords. So, you really won't be using lances that much in this battle. Only in one uh, particular spot. Okay, we saved our game. So, I think it's about time we actually get started. But I'm going to go through all the enemies on the map right now. Now be careful, uh, there are three kinds of ballistas here. Actually four, now that I think about it. Uh, there are um, a regular ballista, an iron ballista does more damage, killer ballista does even more damage and also chance of critical hit, and then a stone ballista. Uh, stone ballistas, uh, they fire a stone at one location, and when it hits one square, it also hits the four adjacent squares as well. Uh, no, I, no diagonals, just the top, bottom, left, right squares in addition to uh, the square it actually hits. It will do significantly more damage to the unit in uh, the center square though. And I think we're ready to start this chapter. So yeah, as I said, sword users in front. And also, I'm going to turn on the battle animations for Zahark, Nephany, and Rolf. Because I think for those guys, it would be a bit easier to get critical hits with them and just uh, see their skills activated. So 
That's why I chose those units in particular. Now, uh, Zahark actually got a lot of action in this battle, so uh, I'm going to turn off his animations after this battle and then switch them to somewhere else. And then, as for Nephany and Rolf, I'll probably keep them theirs on uh, in a few chapters. I haven't really decided yet. I might take Rolf's off, because I think Rolf also got a critical hit in this battle. That's how I'll handle the battle animations. I'll just show you uh, some of the ways they attack. And then if they get a critical hit, uh, I'll show you that as well. So, I think that'll work in the long run. Ooh. And I'll talk more about other stuff in the next video because I am out of time. So, this is Slum Kirby. See you in the next video. Later, guys.